have noticed if you go around to several garden centers that more and more you are finding proteas available that you can buy. Looking gorgeous, absolutely stunning in flower, and some of you might be quite nervous to buy them. Well, we can say thanks to a great grower up the west coast who's growing some beautiful guys just like this. This guy is called Little Prince. Um, the company that is growing them hybridizes certain beautiful proteas, not only proteas itself, but also those that are closely related. In other words, the pin cushions, even beautiful specimens called Blushing Bride, and those that don't flower, that literally just give you wonderful foliage. And you know what, guys? You really don't need to be nervous about planting them and growing them in your, in your area. I am here in KwaZulu-Natal. This is in my garden and this is what the protea looks like. It's only been in for six months and look at it, absolutely stunning. I mean, now that is a healthy plant. And what is the secret? Well, it's all about the planting and the care. But I want to also show you how quickly they grow. This little guy is only six months old. But let me show you one that's been in for a little while longer to show you how quickly they grow. This is a king protea and it's been in for 18 months. And you can just see how glorious it is. It's a perfect plant because it's nicely branched way at the bottom. That's because it's been pruned properly. Do you see there's the prune mark down there? And wherever you've pruned it, several branches come out from it, which is important that you prune it properly and regularly. And that would be directly after flowering. So you can imagine last season, there was a flower coming off the stem here, a single stem, pruned back and then off that you get these three healthy shoots coming off it. And that is gonna make your plant bush out and give you much more flowers for the following season. The other thing that's important about proteas is mulching. It really, really is critical that in the first 18 months that you keep them well mulched and also well watered. After that, they're on their own. They've flown the coop and you can just sit back and enjoy them. So for what other reasons should we be planting these beautiful plants in our gardens? Well, number one, the sunbirds love them. They dance on these flowers in the morning. They absolutely love it. Of course, proteas as a cut flower are fantastic. Cut them, put them in a vase. Once they've spent about six weeks in your home, oh yes, about six weeks, you can then just leave them as the dried specimens as well. They really are great, and not only that, the foliage ones are also great for putting in just some mixed arrangements. So let's get to planting one to show you how it's done. So guys, we've already prepared the hole where we're gonna be putting our protea in. In fact, it is a protea that I'm gonna be planting, but it's called a pincushion. You can see why it's called a pincushion, because it looks just like a pincushion. This guy is called a leucospermum. Now that is also part of the protea family, but don't get stressed out about all the botanical stuff. Just know that it's really an awesome plant. It's called Anuk, as you can see here by the label. And if it isn't in flower at your local garden center, at least you know what you're buying. Remember, all the instructions of how to plant them and care for them is right on the back here, so there's no reason why you should mess it up. So let's get going. A couple of important things that we need, and this is the real, real. This is the key to it. This is a special potting mix that has been made specifically for the Protea family. So you want to dig your hole at least double the depth of the pot, double the width of the pot. And you want to put in a good thick layer of the special Protea mix in the bottom and in this case folks we don't use any superphosphate or bone meal and this is really important because proteas hate any phosphates that's generally the reason why we actually kill them is because they're kind of allergic to phosphate so if you use any superphosphate they're going to turn up their toes and die on you now so let's take a look at why this is so important this is made up of peat a bit of coir you can see in here and the reason why it's so good is because of this. Do you see that? Because as the plant is needing moisture, the moisture is able to be held in this and then as the plant needs it, it can just suck it all out of it. And that is the key to growing your protea. Because in the Western Cape where they grow naturally, it of course rains all winter. Whereas in the rest of the country, it doesn't rain and that's when these guys need the water most. So if you do forget to water it, well, it's got its reserves all locked up in your special mixture, which it can then draw from. So we've got a nice little bed there. Let's take our little baby. Remember to take it out of the pot, your finger there, 
turn it upside down, give it a squeeze, give it a squeeze, out it pops. And you can see that it's also planted in exactly the same mixture. Here you can see the coir particles. Let's pop this little baby in. Oh, look at that. All right, make sure it's in the center, and then we fill it up with the rest of our mixture all the way around it. Now this bag has covered about half of the depth of our planting hole. So now you take the soil that you removed and you put it around it just to make sure that you get the right covering. Pop it all around. For the first 18 months at least, create a little well around the plant so that when you are watering it, it that the water doesn't just run away. So if it is in a garden bed, you know, not like I've individually planted them here because I want mine in rows because I'm using them as cut flowers. However, if you are planting it just in a garden bed, then just make this little well around it or a little dummicky as they call it, a little dam, so that when you do water, the water doesn't run away. Your final and most important exercise is to mulch it. And I've got some lovely macadamia nutshells here. Remember, you could use your own compost that you've made at home. You could use peanut shells. You could use grass clippings. You could use straw, as long as you're giving it a good mulch around the plant, because what that is going to do is lock in all that important moisture that we don't want to escape. And there you have it, one times little pin cushion, ready to go. And already I've got three flowers next year and in 18 months I know that I'll be able to get at least 12 flowers off this plant. All I've got to do is keep it well watered for the first 18 months. When I say well watered, probably three times a week and then you can start cutting back on it. Remember when it comes down to pruning, when this guy's finished flowering, you're going to prune it about halfway down. Remember, halfway down. Prune it back and just like I showed you earlier, where you've pruned it, three Beautiful new stems will emerge from that. So by next season, it's going to be right up here. Enjoy them, folks. They are absolutely glorious. And I'm so excited about planting proteas in my garden that you can see I've gone a bit doolally about it. <laughs> <laughs>